and it's time to make arancini. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make some rice balls here today at Davido Restaurant. This is the preparation we're going to be using for Festa Italiana coming up here next week. Arancini's rice balls are probably the most popular items we have on the grounds. We've got things, odd items like calamari, eggplant, and cannolis, but rice balls are right up there with them. Now, rice ball, obviously made from rice. This is a boreal rice, which is the rice that is used to make risotto. And the tradition of, uh, or the history behind the rice ball is that it was the leftover risotto from the night before that was refrigerated, and it was reused the following day to make a rice ball up with other components from the home. Certainly you can use anything you want to put in your rice ball, but today we're going to be using the ground beef, tomato sauce, and peas filling, which is one of the most popular items we have. So as I stated here before, we have the, the uh, uh, arborio rice, which has been cooked down in a chicken stock. Uh, it's been seasoned, added with a little bit of butter and Romano cheese. Uh, the process from here now is just in the formation of the rice ball. It's a little tricky. Uh, the rice is very sticky. What's nice about the arborio rice, because it's a small grain rice, it has a lot of high starch content. So the rice can stick together real well, very easy for forming. However, because there is a lot of starch to it, it can be very sticky on your hands. So you always recommend when you make your rice ball, have a little bit of aqua minerale right over here so you can keep your hands nice and clean and loose for the rice. I portioned out a few pieces of the of the rice over here, which would kind of make it for, for each side. So I like to do it in, in two sections. The first section, for which would be the meat and the filling of the cheese, and then the final section to cover it up and create the rice ball out. So I'm going to begin here with the first process with the first part of the ball. Just kind of get it nice and flat. I'm going to take up another one over here too with a little extra of royal rice. I took them out of my pre-scoop. I use a nice little measuring. It's kind of nice to have these kind of measured out in advance. It makes it a lot faster for you. It helps you be a little more consistent with the preparation of the rice ball. So I'm going to take this little scoop of the filling, lay it on over here. We like to put a little surprise on our rice balls. A nice little chunk of melty mozzarella cheese. It's a wonderful little surprise when you bite open into your rice ball. Now I'm going to be taking that other layer of rice from the abori over here, which I've pre-flattened out, and just putting it over the top. And now the process is pretty simple from here. Create yourself a little snowball, or what I like to call an arancini rice ball. That is it at this point in time. Now from here, we like to go into what we call a slurry, which is, you can use an egg wash mix if you'd like. Here I just got a little bit of flour and water. Flour kind of, the water kind of compasses around the rice ball and helps us coat then for the, the meat rice ball. At this point in time, I'm going to move into the other part of the kitchen. I'm going to put it in the fryer. We like to give it a good about a, oh, maybe about three to four minutes in the fire, which kind of encloses uh, everything in, kind of creates a good crust on it, and a nice golden color. And at that point in time, if we finish it off in the oven so it's ready to eat. So I'll go pop this baby in the oven, and I'll be right back. And here's our golden brown, fully encrusted, fried rice ball. What we like to do now is put a little sauce over the top of it for dining. And this, my friends, is it flocks everybody to the grounds of Festa Italiana. Arancini with rice ball with a little tomato sauce and some Romano cheese on the top, glass of red wine, we're all happy.